politics and the media. And the teacher in me, forgive me, I just have to do this for one minute. We started in September looking at political ads in the media. Things like, what's the music like? What are the visuals like? What words are used? It, how is this person described from one media source to another? In last month, in October, we moved from political advertising to social media. And I learned from Kelly Monday night that social media is not under the auspices of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. Everything else is, but social media is out there freewheeling. And our presenter last month led us to understand that with social media, it's called homophily. You tend to go to sites that reinforce and support your own viewpoints. And all of our speakers, and Kelly included, I don't mean to preempt anything, but what I've picked up from this fall, if nothing else, forgive me, the teacher has to do a, a closure statement. Diverse sources. Go to as many different stations, as many different social media sites, as many different papers, magazines, and so forth as you can if you really want a well-balanced approach. And with further, with no further ado, <laughs> sorry, I've had further ado tonight. <laughs> All right, I'm delighted to present to you one of the League of Women Voters' own members, but uh, quite a media personality here in Mobile. I learned that Kelly has really worked in a variety of venues and markets around the world, including Belgium, Yuma, Arizona, San Diego, California, Detroit, Michigan. Prior to coming here, she was in Kansas City, and in 2013, she arrived in Mobile. She is currently CEO of KFIN Productions, and she is also an anchor on a morning talk show on 106.5, and if you want to tune in, you can hear her every morning, 106.5, from six, for, six until nine for a retired person. Some of that's a stretch. All right, but without, without any more jabbering for me, please give a really warm welcome to Kelly Finley. Thank you for that very warm welcome. We wear a lot of titles, I think all of us do. I have a teammate in the room, Robert Kennedy. He's also on FM Talk 106.5. He has his own show and he, he is very diverse with his guests. I'm very impressed. I knew that, but to be able to hear that on the airwaves is beautiful. So make sure you connect with him as well. Um, I know, I, I'm gonna keep us on time because I know we all have jobs and we, we have eaten our dinner, so you're probably a little tired. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with the program and really bring you uh, up to speed as to media and politics and understanding who's who and what's what. So I'm really excited to be here. And it's funny because um, I wanted to start my message off with the word balance, because balance is something that I search for as a mom and as a wife, we have three children. Uh, my husband, he's part of the, he was the first man, as part, a male member of the League of Women Voters, and he's very proud to tell you that, Carlos Finley. He, he brought me to my first meeting and I was very, very impressed. Um, he is a judge and an attorney. I am a journalist with more than 20 years experience. And as Donna mentioned, I've started KFIN Productions. And so under that umbrella, um, I, I teach social media classes. I uh, also, uh, do video production, so I am directing and producing and shooting and editing uh, products for my clients. I also do public speaking, and it seems like every other thing that can possibly fall under there, social media management and brand management, and helping people really market who they are. And I, the reason why that's so such a vibrant um, industry now is because so many people think it has to be TV or radio, but they don't have the budgets to match that. So that's where KFIN Productions comes into play. So I'm super excited to represent my company and also represent my sisters because these are my sisters. We had a meeting earlier this week and so this is a continuation of our conversation. And I told the ladies, I said, you know, I'm from Detroit, I'm, I'm a northerner, and never did I know that I'd have so many um, sister girls that live in Mobile. 
We're all different colors, we are different ages, but what we care about is making sure that we represent balance when it comes to uh, politics. So whether you are a Republican or a Democrat or independent, our job is to make sure that you get balanced information. And that's the job of the media, the real media. And let me preface this talk with saying this. There are many people who have doctorates and long titles, and they, I mean, very impressive, and I, I applaud them. But I have been in the industry, and there's something different about being in the industry, being in the trenches, and really sharing with you what happens in the newsroom and people who read about it. And I, I always liken it to being a parent. You know, you can, you can babysit your butt off, but until you have your own child, do you understand what you would do for this child? So keep that in mind. So, and I'm, I'm very transparent. If, if you ask a question, if I don't know it, I'll let you know. I don't know, but I will find the answer for you. I want this to be interactive. So if you have a question about one of my slides, please um, raise your hand and we will get to it. So a big thank you to Myra, because she was over here calming me down because we couldn't find my slides at one point. So Myra, the magical sister, thank you. And then she gently reminds me. We're on Facebook right now, we're live streaming. So if you are not a friend of our Facebook page, please find us. Don't tag the wrong page, because for so long I was a member at the state level and the national level, not Mobile. So I had to fix that on my page. So if you find, please find us and like the page. And then you can also share this message a little bit later with your friends and family. So there I am, that is me, uh, Kelly Finley, KFIN Productions. Very proud to be president and CEO. And an entrepreneur is something I didn't know I wanted to do, but I tell you, if you're tired of having to do things one way, um, but you want to hone in on that experience, being a, a, an entrepreneur is a really great blessing. That's what I will call it, a blessing. My next slide, a little bit more about me. I'm gonna fly through some of these because I've already said them. As you can see, 20 year uh, plus year journalist in television, radio, and print. I anchor, I direct, I produce, I edit. I've been a reporter. And I have international experience. We lived overseas in Toronto, Albania, and Brussels, Belgium. I was a newsletter editor in Brussels at the Brussels Weekly, and my kids went to the uh, Brussels Sprouts daycare. <laughs> um, wife, mother, entrepreneur, and a volunteer. I am on nine boards right now. And I don't say that to try to impress anyone, but I do that because I'm not from here. And I had, and, and to, in order to understand the tone of the conversation, you have to be involved. And not just in what you like per se, but understanding the needs of the community. And so I'm not just on boards to see my name in lights. I'm on boards so that I can um, give my experience, whether it's from a communication standpoint, a media standpoint, or what have you. My next slide, I'm taking you into the uh, news station. Many times people, they don't understand how are stories made? How do stories go from an idea to the station? Who's who and what's what? As you can see on the screen, uh, I'm using an example from my last station, Local 15. And the way it goes from a role standpoint, you have your general manager and your vice president. Sometimes it's the same person. It usually is in a smaller market or medium-sized market like this. And that person is over every single department within your um, within your station. So we're talking on the news side of the house as well as the sales side. But I'm gonna keep it to the news because that's a whole lot of branches on the tree. And I just wanna really stick to what I know. That, and that's important because many times people get a microphone and they saw it on YouTube or they saw it somewhere else so they become an expert. I don't do that. I, I'm gonna tell you what I know. So, so from the general manager, VP goes down to the news director. The news director is the boss over everything in news. He or she has a counterpart on the sales side, and the reason why that's important is because that impacts what goes into newscasts and, and, and where it goes sometimes. The news director is over the assignment editor. The assignment editor, if you ever have an idea or a story and you want it to get on the airwaves, this is really your first line of contact if you don't know anyone at that station. This person, is it's, they're really funny because they sit at a desk and they have scanners blaring and they have phones ringing, they have people screaming at them and they are assigning where the photographers, who are the photojournalists, they assign where they go, they need to know where every reporter is, they need to know what anchor is working on which story. So they are the hub, the nucleus of that newsroom and they're really the boss when the boss is away. Um, and they hold a lot of respect in that, in that, um, in that role. After the uh, assignment editor, you have your executive producer. And what happens is obviously there's 24 hours in the day and one person can't be there for all of the hours that you see in 
the news on, or even when the news is not. So you have an AM, which is a morning executive producer, and then you have a PM executive producer. So me being on the morning show, my day started at 2 a.m., and I was at work by 3 a.m., and I, had, I did my hair and makeup and read through my scripts by 3.30, and I, was, and I was then working on, you know, fine-tuning my scripts and being ready for TV because I wanted you to know that these were my words, not something that somebody just dropped in there. Well, my executive producer, she had an overnight shift, so she came in at 11 p.m. That way she could watch the tail end or she could see the last newscast, if not in real time, then just about real time. And then so she knew or he would know how to stack their show so the morning show was fresh but we're also um, up to date with information that happened overnight. And that's why a lot of times you'll hear anchors say, while you were sleeping, because you were sleeping. We want to be sleeping, <laughs> but that's not happening. So that's your executive producer. And then so, you're, so for my morning executive producer, she had two other producers that worked underneath her. One did the 5 a.m. show, so 5 to 6 a.m., and the other did the 6 to 7 a.m., and the executive producer is the boss over that, and so he or she would handle live shots while you're, while you're on air. So there's a lot of movement going around, and the morning show, it used to be the graveyard shift. That's where people who got in real big trouble would go to, but what happened is, is, is the world kind of shifted a little bit, and they realized that the money makers, the CEOs, well, they wake up early in the morning, and they want to know what's going on. So they put their power hitters on the morning show just as much as they would on the evening. It used to be, oh, you're an evening anchor. You must be, you know, the best one. Well, now you've got the best one on the mornings and the best one on the evenings, too, because your sales department and your news department, they understand that you're trying to talk to a, a wide variety of demographics and people. So um, next slide, please, Ms. Myra. Thank you. Now, so that's an overview of, of the news um, family, if you will. Now I'm taking you deeper. So now we're going into like first cousins um, inside the newsroom. So your news director, and as I already mentioned, news director, assignment editor, executive producer, producer. Now the producer, the executive producer and producers are over the anchors. And, and the anchor directly reports to that producer because the anchor is a leadership role, but you're on camera. So you can't be back in the back making decisions and being on camera. You have to take your ideas and um, um, you know, changes that you may have, you take it to your executive producer slash producer. And the reason why you have a producer, because that producer will know specifically why they put that story at 5.15 a.m. and the 6 a.m. producer will know why they put it at 6.30. Because what happens is from a Nielsen standpoint, they need you to be watching that station for so many minutes for it to count for that station. So it, it kind of varies throughout the markets, but it could be like, let's say 6.08 a.m. If, you, if 6.08, you're watching my station, then I, the Nielsen says, oh, you have a viewer. But if you change it at 6.06, I've lost you. And so it, it comes up a hash mark or a zero. So that's why if you ever wonder on the news, if they say, um, that story is coming up, and you're like, come on, I'm trying to leave. I gotta go to work. They're holding you for a reason. They need you to stay. That's called the tease. It's true. Um, your reporters, yes, ma'am? How do they know who's listening? Nielsen. Nielsen. Um, yeah, Nielsen. Nielsen, they do Nielsen ratings, and so this, depending on the markets, the bigger markets have real time, so they can, they can figure out who's watching um, day by day. So like when I was in, and I'll get into the market sizes, but when I was in Kansas City, I knew who was watching every 15 minutes, how many people were watching every 15 minutes, and from, from this time yesterday, last week, a month ago, a year ago. Because based on, it's based on, I don't, I don't want to get too complicated with it, but based on the market size, you are able to, Nielsen has it figured out with your boxes, with your TV boxes, as to who's watching. And you have to be on for so many minutes, but you have to be a certain size DMA. And we'll get into that in a couple more slides. But it's very interesting. Now here in Mobile, it's not the same. They will send you a paper copy. Usually there's a dollar in there. I don't know if anybody's ever received it. Like, I've received one. You have. I've received one, but legally I, I, I can't do anything with it. But they'll send you a dollar and say, hey, write down who you usually watch. Well, if it was like 30 days ago, um, you're going you're gonna to look at your TV and, and look what's on and probably write that down. So it's not really accurate. So, you, so you're reaching. And the reason why, from a bigger market standpoint, why it works better is because if at 515 every day we put a funny story and we see our numbers go down, then we can change that instantly and say, don't put funny story at 5.02, because our numbers are going down. 
They want so then you put a health story. Okay, did that not not work? Okay, then you'll put a pet story. Oh my gosh, our numbers are skyrocketing. So you know at 515, put that pet story. It's fascinating to see. I'm not a mathematician, but I but I knew when the numbers were bigger <laughs> and when they counted for us. Um, after the reporters, you have your photojournalists, and again, and, and a lot of these um, roles are blending now because what's happening is we are expected to do more with less, and the product is suffering. And as we all know, because we're old enough to have this conversation, you know, younger talent is cheaper. But look what happens when you put someone with very little experience in a major role. And they're trying to juggle, they're trying to figure out, you know, this, this, new, this new role, this new job, this new market, this new city, and they're having to shoot their own, their own um, story, and then they're having to edit it, then they're, then they're having to go live by themselves. I mean, I, I, God bless them, but the problem is, is that when things go wrong, because it will, you see all that play out on air. And what happens is a lot of people have this idea of, if that happens on air, you're not taking me seriously as a viewer, so I'm not going to watch you. And the product is suffering, and more and more people are turning to social media for their news because they don't want to wait till 5 p.m. They don't want to wait till 6 p.m. They want it now. We have this drive-through mentality in America. We want it now, like yesterday, now, right now. Look, again, okay, I, I, need it, I need you to refresh it. It's been seven seconds. I need something new. We have that mentality. And so the product is being impacted, and then we hear words like fake news. And that's a trigger point to many journalists who really bust their hump to put out a good product and who have gone to school for this and who, have, who, who try to vet their sources as best as possible. But sometimes you're given a story. You're, it, could be eight of, it, it could be, let's say, 9.50, and you've been working on the story all day long, and then there's a breaking news story. That story gets thrown away. You've now got to go breaking news. You're top of the show. But I, I, just, I just got here. Tell us what you know, because people, especially news directors, love to see live. And they don't just like to see it, the audience likes to see it, because they'll look at, they'll flip channels. Well, how come he's live in front of the fire and she's in the newsroom? That station, they don't know how to work. That's not it. Maybe they didn't have enough people to get them there. But the viewer has no idea what's going on. It's, it's kind of like um, making gumbo. You know what the final product tastes like, but you have no idea all the chopping, the cutting, the seasoning that goes into it. You just know you want a very happy belly. And that's like a good um, news story. Next slide, please. So I talked about DMA. As you can see, the DMA ranking. So is um, DMA stands for Designated Market Areas. So there's 210 in the nation. And what that means is, this is very odd, but the lower the market, the more people. So New York is the number one market, Los Angeles number two, Chicago number three, Mobile, Pensacola is number 58. So when I started out my career in Yuma, Arizona, I was in market 177. I've been to Yuma. You know. I mean, we were editing on Super VHS. And it was just so funny, but I, I believe everybody should go somewhere. How can you by, be diverse with your message if you haven't seen anything outside of 251? That's why it all looks the same. So you, you, you learn on really bad equipment and bad lighting and your makeup looks horrible and your clothes are just not fitting well and people let you know, and then you move on. And <laughs> so from, from Yuma, I went to Billings, Montana. So I went from morning and afternoon anchoring to the evening anchor in Billings, Montana. Well, people there, there. you've been there too? <laughs> people there will call and say, that Indian lady's makeup looks weird. I'm not Indian. They've never seen a black woman on the air. And they didn't mean it disrespectfully, but they didn't know. But that was why I loved my station, that they reached out of, the, of, of what they could have just, that avenue of sameness. And they reached out. We had a great product. We had a duopoly. I'll explain that um, in the next slide. But So again, there, there are the numbers for the, for the different um, markets. And so you can understand, and so many millions of people filled the DMA for New York. That's why they're number one. And what's interesting, side note, if you travel a lot, you'll notice how anchors look so different. So in New York, you're gonna see those sharp, like Halle Berry haircuts. Boom, sideburns, yes. But in LA, you see short skirts, low tops, big hair. So there's different wants and needs for every market. That's not your imagination that's really happening. Next slide, please. 
So I put this up, I, I just Googled, I said, give me um, some logos of national news. And as you can see, I'm sure some of your favorite national news logos are sitting there. You have NPR, PBS, CNN, AOL, ESPN2, HBO, and then various, even Playboy is up there, and various local um, um, stations and markets and media, and media of course is radio and print and TV. And what these are called, so that's the national level, and then there are called what, what are called affiliates. So, so Local 15 is an NBC affiliate, WKRG is a CBS affiliate, and that means that our big brother, our, you know, our, I don't want to say big brother like that. Let's say our grandfather is um, going to be that same, uh, that's, there's going to be that same name, so NBC, but at, on the New York level. And then above New York becomes the national level. So because, of course, New York has their own local news, plus they have national news, which is ve it's just very different. Sometimes there are stations that, that you, you notice kind of do something different. Those are called O&Os, owned and operated. That means that that owner, they own it. So they can, and that's why local is so important, because they can put more into it or take out less, or they can make up their rules that fit them, and if it doesn't work, they can change it all again. But when you're owned by these major stations, you have to follow what the other stations are doing, what the other affiliates are doing. I gave an example um, earlier this week. Sometimes if you wonder, how'd they get that story from my hometown of Detroit? How'd they get that story from Detroit in, in Mobile News? Like, did, I used to think, I'm not kidding, I used to think that they would send a reporter to Detroit, go get the story, come back, and, and then work on the story. That's not the way it works. What happens is, in Detroit, I'll use as an example, they will, somebody will call um, from the national level and they'll call Detroit and say, hey, tell me what your rundown was. What were your top stories? Okay, what was your kicker? Okay, tell me something interesting. Ooh, I like that, give me that. And so they'll take it and they'll put it in a computer where all the affiliates can see it. And it'll say where it originated from, what the story slug, which is the title, um, and then how long the story is. And it'll even have an anchor intro. So it's gonna tell your anchor what to say. And the anchor should change it, but as we know, sometimes they don't. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Say the same thing, so you'll hear. That, and that's why. Yep. And that's why, like Jimmy Fallon, has fun with things like this. I believe that's the comic who puts a montage together and does one whole sentence and has 50 faces and everybody saying the same thing. That's lazy. You should never just say. I mean, just change a few words around at least. But you should never just say what's given to you because again, if it's coming from your affiliates, other people are getting the exact same message and. And I know at Sinclair we had what's called must runs. And that meant we could not kill that story. We could not get rid of it or we'd be fired. They wanted, it had to run. And so many times they were, I mean, especially during the 2016 political um, cycle, there were many stories on Sinclair that were pro-candidate Donald Trump and very anti-Hillary Clinton. And we had to run these stories. And so, you know, and viewers call up and they complain and they hate it. So producers got smart. They said, you know what? I, I, because as journalists, you're supposed to be nonpartisan and balanced. There's that word again. But producers said, I don't, I don't want to lose my job, but I also don't want this in my show. So they'd find a cool time when most people were asleep and they'd run it then. <laughs> so when the boss said, did you run that story? I did. Okay, that, that, that matters. Um, the Federal Communications Commission, um, FCC, um, is, a, is a powerful entity in its own right, but as we alluded to earlier, they're over radio and TV, not social media. And so the whole Facebook chatter that's happened with Mark Zuckerberg, the reason why that's a big deal is because he's saying the power of money is more important than real news, accurate news. And that's very scary because there are some people who are so fed up with mainstream media, as they like to call it, that they say, hmm, I'm gonna go to social media and I'm gonna trust my Facebook page because my friend told me. Okay, that doesn't mean it's accurate because your friend shared it. And as I mentioned earlier this week, what's very important is if you're going to be on social media, if that's your news source, I encourage you to look for a blue check mark next to the name of that Facebook page, that Twitter handle, um, even on Instagram, that blue check mark means that this person or organization is verified. Please look for the verified. And I have 
I have looked at stories, because from my social media, and I know Aqualyn, we're Facebook friends, so she can attest to this, I don't just share everything. Because that's a trusted place. And people know my background, and they know I don't play that. And so if somebody, so I, I, you know, you can set your Facebook page and your different pages where you have to approve before anybody can post on your page. But if you have the audacity to post on my page and tag me, well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a note and let you know I didn't like it. Then I want to block you. You, use all, you lose all rights, period. Because what happens is some, I've had people say, well, oh, I saw it on your Facebook page, so I knew I should go to this, or I knew I should donate. No. You, you, if you're going to be like that, then you, have got, you owe it to your friends and your family to look for that check mark. Please do so. Moving on to our next um, page. And so Federal Communications Commission is, I don't know if you can read that, and I will, I will, I will read it to you. But this is important because many people, they don't know the role of the FCC, and it says that it regulates interstate and international communications by radio, television, wire, satellite, and cable in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and U.S. territories, an independent U.S. government agency overseen by Congress. The commission is the United States' primary authority for communications, law, regulation, and technological innovation. And if you go to the next uh, page, please, uh, Myra, um, the other way. That's okay. Um, other way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Keep going. That's fine. You can leave it there. So the issue is, is that the FCC, they're regulating radio and TV. But social media, it's a free-for-all. And that's scary. Because people are trying things. Oh, you can lose weight in two days. Oh, my goodness. Drink that magical. Come on. But people believe it. Because it's repetition, repetition, repetition. So what I did on this slide, because sometimes you don't know who to trust. And all of us have been caught in the, is this for real? Or is this, or is this too good to be true? When you're looking at websites, you want to look to see the very end. Does it say .gov, .org, or .com? It's very, very important because that will help you understand, are they in it for me? Or are they in it for them? Or, you know, what, what's their background? Because and I was talking to our kids. It's funny because they have to do um, current events in high school. And I love this. And I said, okay, well, where are you, where are you getting your news from? Oh, I got it from such and such. Mm -mm, that's not going to work. Why not? Because what happens is you're taking all that information and that's leaning left or it's leaning right and you don't realize it. And so the minute you mention that website and those facts, you are not going to be taken seriously because it looks like you just threw something together not knowing the background of that source. You are not allowed to use anything that says .org is what I tell the kids. And there, edu is very good, .edu, which means obviously it's been vetted so many different layers, it's been vetted and it's worth it. But the problem is, people don't want to read. They just want headlines and they want, they want quick sound bites. And then they want to share like, ooh, I was first. Yeah, but you want to be first. You can be second and be accurate. So on the next slide, I break down what each means. .gov is the name that is derived from the word government. It indicates it's restricted use by government entities, permissions, who are able to use .gov, well, the United States government, formerly only federal government, but later that was expanded to include state and local government. So everybody can't get a .gov. And I will tell you, and, and just a reminder, we are live streaming, so this is a funny story. When I was an intern at WDIV in Detroit, um, some, um, I was given the assignment to look up some information about the White House. I was like, oh, I got it, no problem. And I put in White House dot, and I didn't put in the right, I got a whole lot of stuff that I wasn't supposed to be looking at. And, and, and as an intern, I'm in the hub so people can look over my shoulder. And, and there was all types of um, pornography that was popping up, and it was locking the pages. So you're trying to like get out of it. Like, I'm not really looking at this at work. I'm not, I'm not. And it was just more. And every time you hit a button, more was coming. And they busted out laughing. They said, it's okay. You didn't realize. But it's such a difference between .gov and .org and .com. Dot org, that name is derived from the word organization and was originally intended for nonprofit entities, but that restriction was not enforced and it has since been removed. So when you see dot org, that domain is commonly used by schools, open source projects, uh, communities, 
and for some for-profit entities. That is important because somebody they can draw you in with a sob story or the need and the want, and you're 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 there. And then there's a credit card, you know, um, option, and you want to give. And then you have to always scroll down to the very bottom of the page. It's very important. And you also need to just look around if it's too if it looks too good to be true. It probably is. And I know you're probably thinking. I'm sharing a lot of news information with you, but this is important because see, when your, your foundation is your news, so that when, when, during the political season, these things will pop up and it'll make sense. Next slide. Oh, I'm gonna go back. Oh, thank you. Uh, dot com, that name is derived from the word commercial. It indicates original intended purpose for domains registered by commercial organizations, and that was then later updated um, as, as you know, the more we get into the social media is the more they're, they're fine tuning the different names. Um, that was later updated to include though general purposes. Our next slide, I, I call this one what, when, where, why, and how. Because many times you wonder why does the news go this way in this market but when I travel it goes this way. Well this should help you understand. So those are the top 30 TV station groups. And if you, you see Nexstar, so Nexstar owns 63% of the coverage. Six, oh, wow. that, I Sinclair, Sinclair, well, Sinclair was going to buy Tribune, but that, back, that backfired. So these numbers are shifting, but Nexstar is the biggie. Sinclair has 39% of the total coverage, and this is from 2019. These numbers are from 2019, courtesy of the um, BIA Advisory Services. But you can see, and so what happens is when these big giant companies start getting, what they do is they get the little, they get the little um, affiliates, and they start gaining more and more strength. And so, more, so the messaging is being heard in more and more markets across more and more zip codes and cities and demographics. So you get the point. So there are your top um, 10 right there on, on your screen. And if you look, if you go back, thank you. If you, if you look, some of those names sound familiar. Scripps, I mean, many people know that from a newspaper standpoint. NBCU, you know that from TV. Uh, CBS, that includes sports as well as news. Uh, Tegna is uh, out of Denver, and they've they have a very interesting product. They're they're very cutting edge with what they uh, put on the air, and of course, Univision, ABC, Disney, all of these powerhouse names. They're they're not just doing news. They're doing so many different, um, like I said, branches of a tree. Is how they're reaching out. So they're reaching you in different ways. So you may hear it on, and you may not realize that that same Sinclair not only owns the TV station, but also the radio station you're listening to, and that newspaper, if we had a newspaper, they could be printing that as well. So you're getting the same news in three different versions, and then you wonder why there's no diversity, because the big boys are gobbling up the little guys. Um, so our local stations, I'll tell you where they fall on there when it comes to that list, but I'm sure you can guess at least two of them. Um, the last um, question I have right there is called, what's a duopoly? A duopoly means when you have more than one station under one roof. So when I was in Montana, we were a duopoly, we were ABC and Fox. So what we would do, and we had, cool, we had a cool setup, we had a station was all chroma key, so our, our, new, our, um, our anchor set was a green room. And our directors would just change the backgrounds. So, hey, it's 4th of July, boop, 4th of July, yay. Oh, it's Thanksgiving, you know, so on, on and on and on, except when the system had an attitude, because we had robotic cameras, they would start walking and spinning, and the room is like, Vee! it's like it's like short circuit. Very, very fun indeed, but what we would do is I would have, we'd have certain stories would always go on the Fox station for more of the hipper crew. These are the people who watch the 9 p.m. news and they want their stuff early because they've got, they've got lives. They want to go do things. And the other news, the ABC, where these were for the people who were staying home. They want their news before they go to bed. So you would cater where you put your stories, how you ran your stories to your different audiences. So two stations under one roof, that equals a duopoly. Anybody have any questions? I know I'm kind of. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Sinclair of both our NBC affiliate and the ABC affiliate in Pensacola. How did they get away with that? Because it's basically one market. It is. It is one market, yeah. but but it's a totally different market. It's very interesting. Um, I don't I don't have the 
um, legal answer to give you on that. But it's an issue because what happens is Pensacola, they only have they don't have a choice. They get it's a different newscast. They have no they do have two totally different news directors. They have two totally different general managers. They have two totally different newsrooms. They don't crisscross each other. But they show a lot of the same. They sh they share information. That, that, but but the WKRG has one as well. They have a nine o'clock version. Um, WK, well, the, CBS, the CW uh, CW channel. Well, yeah, that, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about since there are only two different stations. Mm -hmm. Now, next door, and, and it's very you can see where next door is very conservative, and they show again I wouldn't, the national I don't. national news that is very conservative. Uh -huh. Next door. Is also conservative, but not as in your face conservative. But that's all in the opinion of the person watching. Because where you where you come from, you may see something as as very opinionated, and I may see it as forward thinking. And you know what I'm saying? So I and I know the point of the League of Women Voters is that we don't get into you know which side you're on. I know. But it, but you want that balance, and if you don't feel that there's balance, you should watch all of them if possible. Well, I do. I watch a little bit from every. Okay. Next door, the, our channel 5 has now become a mobile Pensacola station. Mm -hmm. It's not every, Escambia County, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to do what they can to retain as many viewers as possible. And they're trying to reach you in different ways, not just TV or radio, but social media. And we're, that's going to be the next slide. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. But then the other thing is, what do we as or whatever talk about balance? Mm -hmm. Many times in this market, I see a whole lot of conversation politically right. on one side with certain candidates mm -hmm. and not the other. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things can we do um, to help promote that balance? Who's making that decision? Is it the assignment editor that you mentioned before? Who's doing that? How? What can we? I'm glad you mentioned that because that leads to the to the next slide. You're so good. <laughs> so I I pulled up WPMI, my last station, which is known now as my NBC. It was local 15 when I was there. Ownership is Sinclair Broadcast Group. Many people don't know this, but this is on their website, and I, I put a screen grab here so you understood that there's a public and political file. The public file can be accessed by anyone. You can go on their website. And you can go see what's going on. Many people don't do that. And if you see that there's not balance, you can demand better. And you want to write to not just the general manager, but you want to write to the news director and whoever they report to at the national level. You, it can go on and on and on. And, and because of the beauty of social media, you can see who's the boss and write to them too. And then, and then tag them as well. But that is on the Local 15 uh, page as well as closed captioning concerns. Because some people, I remember um, in the morning, I we, we would get, you need help flipping it around? Okay. You want me to help? Yeah. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember that with our stories, you know, you want to ad lib. You can't do that because you'll be fined. You have got to have closed captioning. I mean, and how vain are you, and I'm counting all of us, but how vain are you to think that everybody can hear? You know, people deserve to hear their news. And so that's why the closed captioning is there. If we go to the next slide, you can see this is um, WKRG. This is their, uh, the very bottom of their website. If you look, it tells you who owns WKRG. There's Nexstar right there. These are things you should always scroll at the very bottom to see who's who and what's what. Those are, there are active links at the bottom where you can also see their public files. Again, many people don't know that. That's important during the political season. So you can see how their coverage has become their coverage. And it's important because most people don't check it. They're not holding them accountable. And we all know that money talks. Next slide, and, and obviously Nextstar owns um, WKRG. Now this is what I did for Fox uh, 10, which is WALA, their ownership is Meredith. There's one side of their page 
on the left side where you can see the different shows that are listed. Um, you can see station information at the very bottom. You can see how to reach them and all that good stuff. On the FCC portion, I clicked on it, and this is what comes up. It, this is what you will see. You will see all the uh, happenings at this station. You can see when this was filed. You can see license information, renewal authorization, additional documents. All of that information is waiting for you. And I think if we know how to find things, we'll be much more engaged with how our coverage is received by us. Because you shouldn't just eat everything in front of you. you. You deserve to be selective. They should earn your eyeballs. But you got to hold them accountable, and these are ways to do such. Next slide, please. So some people say, well, well which sources? How do I know who to look for? You know, how do I know what's real? Here are my reputable sources that I use as a journalist. It, this is the Associated Press. And maybe not very, it may not be very exciting to some people, but they're right to the business of giving you the news. And as a journalist, I pride myself on giving all the information. What you do with it, that's your business. And ironically, someone um, on Twitter just the other day complimented me for giving very balanced news, and that means so much to me because I strive. I strive to do that. If there is a positive Democrat story, I go out of my way to go find a positive Republican story. That way no one can say, oh, I knew it. I knew it. And, and for those who don't know, so FM Talk 106.5 is talk radio. And they're described as very conservative. And people say, I can't believe you work there. Why? I I'm giving the news. What they stand for has nothing to do with me because I'm remaining true and authentic. And people say, well, I, I, your husband, he ran as a Democrat and, and you're from the North and you're black. <laughs> True, 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 and true. <laughs> Guilty as charged. However, we're two separate people. And I am a professional. And so I knew I was going to be on TV when I was eight years old. So I knew what nonpartisanship meant way back when. And I, and I encourage people, please go into all of my social media and you show me where I'm, I'm not fair. Please show me where I'm slanted. I'll wait. Because I, if, you're free, if you're Facebook friends with me, you see I post quite a bit. This will be on there shortly. Um, but they can't do that. You, you cannot box me into something just because I fit all these boxes in your brain. The point of a real journalist is someone who gives you all of the information. They don't do it in a cutesy manner. They give you the information. They're giving you all the ingredients to make what you want to make. It's how you receive it. Um, we also talked about, and I should have included this, but we talked about this earlier this week, about the difference between um, hosts and pundits and anchors. There's a huge difference. There are people who are brought in specifically to stir things up, to make it more exciting. And the example I gave is who, I mean, I loved watching um, Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake and um, Jerry Springer, because it makes you feel normal. People <laughs> fighting and pulling wigs off. Yes! <laughs> you know, and so that's what's happening now. People know that, hmm, how can we get, how can we keep people watching us? I know, I'll put two Democrats on this side and three Republicans right there. Go! That's not good TV. It, it, it really isn't. And see, the difference between TV and radio is TV, you can at least see their faces. Radio, you just hear a bunch of screaming. I'm not okay with that. Because I think about, I'm not a morning person. And so I know if I'm trying to get my kids to school, the last thing I want to hear is people arguing. And then you hear no one. Your time is valuable. So I pride myself, again, on being very neutral. But there's a difference. Those pundits are, are brought there to stir things up, to keep things active, and those sound bites and be all over social media. It's unfortunate because what we're saying is, is we can't put in all the substance that we've got to do something. Look, look over here, now look over here, now look over here. We're smarter than that. We deserve better, but our time is so short. We're doing so much you know, with so few hours, and, and, and those who are trying to reach you, they know that. They notice they trigger words and, use, and tease you with certain headlines to get you to watch, or clickbait, as we know, where it'll say something like, oh, a million dollars, is that your name on it? Oh, well, let me click that. <laughs> and when you click on it, it's taking you all the way into some crazy pyramid scheme that you have no idea how you got into it. And then now all of a sudden, you, 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 all of your files are being held for ransom. It, it happens so quickly because people know that most people don't know. And they prey on people not knowing. 
And that's why it's so important to go to reputable sites. So the Associated Press is something, when I get ready for my show every morning, I'm checking the Associated Press, I'm checking Reuters, I'm checking US World News, I'm checking CBS, um, CNN, Fox, MSNBC. I'm, I'm, I'm always triple checking. Because, and it's so funny, because when you switch on the different channels, I don't, I don't know if anyone watched the impeachment um, hearing today, yeah. but depending on what station you watched it on, it was kind of a big deal. In other places, it was no big deal at all. Like, how is that possible? It, it, it's so watered down, so you owe it to yourself to check. If you, are, if you love Fox, perfect. Go check its arch nemesis, CNN. And then check MSNBC, which tends to be kind of in the middle of the three. Check them all. Be balanced. That's the key word is balance. People always say, well, what do you watch? I watch them all. If there's something, my poor husband has to deal with it, but I mean, the TV's on when I'm sleeping, so I need to hear breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been like, that. even when I was a kid, I, when I got in trouble, they'd make me watch cartoons. I just, it made me mad, because I loved watching news when I was little. Good morning, America was my thing. Um, so Associated Press is a reputable source. There's Reuters as well. This is, I, I took this from today just to show you what the headline looks like. And what you'll see is it's just factual. It's not, well, there's not extra, um, gosh, fluff involved. It is what it is. You either like it or you don't. But it is what it is. They're not getting into what he said, she said. They're telling you what happened. So that's another reputable source that I use. Um, C-SPAN, love C-SPAN. Perfect example is today, I posted that the um, hearing was happening. Well, I have to watch where I post that from. Because if I post it from um, MSNBC, oh, we knew it. We knew you leaned that way. That's why she posted it that way. Mm-mm, not me. Go check my site. It's, it's, it's C-SPAN. C-SPAN is, I remember being younger, C-SPAN like, would go on at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I don't know who's watching this, but these lawmakers are meeting and, and real business is happening. And that's what I share. I mean, and there, there is the, um, the definition for C-SPAN, and I'm not sure if you can read it. Let me check my notes here so I can tell you some of the words that popped out to me. Because when you're not sure, here's another thing. There's a, it's called a toggle. In the right-hand corner, it looks like um, three layers of lines. Right? And if you toggle, if you go to the toggle, you can see what the mission is. And there's your answer as to if you want to watch that, um, that station or read that website. But C-SPAN, here's their definition. To provide C-SPAN's audience access to the live gavel-to-gavel -gavel proceedings of the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate and to other forums where public policy is discussed, debated, and decided, all without editing or commentary or analysis and with a balanced presentation of points of view. That is so very important. So be sure to look at the mission statement if you're on websites or go to the, um, the respective television stations websites and check that out. My next slide tells you what to watch out for. See that right there, it says sponsored stories. They'll get you because they're, they're mixed in with real news stories. And you'll see something like, oh, J-Lo um, won a dance-off. Oh, she did, let me see. And if you click on that, it's not the J-Lo, it's someone named, you know, Jessica Lorenzo, <laughs> who is trying to run a scheme. But because she paid for that ad placement on the website, she looks reputable. So always check to see if you see sponsored stories or the words ads, paid ad. They're, and they're, always in, they're usually in small print, but you owe it to yourself to do your due diligence and not just click on every single thing, but to question. Question it, because right now everyone is trying to get your attention. And they know that your time is short when it comes to... I've got to pick up kids, I have to go to work, I've got to make dinner, I've got to go shopping, I, oh yeah, my Christmas list, and I gotta do all these things. Oh, what does this say real fast? That's why you get all the alerts that you get. Because they know once they get you, you're gonna click, and you're gonna look, and you won't stop looking. So I would just say, all of this, of course, is news-based because that's what I have experience in, but these few items that I've shared with you today will help you when it comes to the political cycle because you'll know to look for these things. You'll know to ask questions. You'll know where to direct your um, questions to the different stations. Many people don't know, and now you do. My next slide is, does anybody have any questions? 
<laughs> yes, Dr. Carol. Um, I think you noticed that I, I really couldn't sleep all of these blogs that well, but um, I didn't see anything about the black press or the Spanish press or mm -hmm. some of the dark press. I, you mean with the, lo like the logos? It was. A B, a BET was in there, um, and there was also um, Telemundo was in there. But my point was is to if you just put in logo, you're going to get 50 different options as to what you're going to see in a montage of logos. Um, I go back to diversity because no matter what, you know, the way it's supposed to go is your demographics or the people you're talking to, it should be reflective of those who are on the anchor desk. And so it looks very strange. Like in Detroit, we had a huge problem where, you know, we're, you know, 75 80 percent black why are all of our anchors and reporters white like what is that you, you we need people who look like us or if you had all women as anchors well what is that there's men who watch too and so the the, the importance of diversity is is screaming at us now more than ever very loudly because we're getting so much of the same and it's, it's like an echo chamber. People tune into what looks like them, what sounds like them. That's not news. That's not news at all. And so, you know, I always, people think that when I say diversity that I'm saying color. No, I'm saying age and sex and race and size. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna talk to me about swimsuit modeling, that was like 22 years ago. <laughs> so you're not talking to me. I need somebody who looks like me talking to me so I can say, I wanna buy that swimsuit you know, for an example. We have to demand better. We have to demand more diversity in thought and more diversity in messaging. And that happens when you call these stations, when you write these letters, and it, it takes time. It takes time. And unfortunately, in our industry, many of us move, so you've heard all the different places I've lived, I moved every three years. Every three years, and I was an anchor. Most reporters have two-year contracts. So you have such a high turnover rate, and really people, I hate to say it without saying cold, sounding cold, but people don't care. They just have a paycheck to get. And they have three stories and they're trying to get a lunch. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'd like to recommend a magazine that is very balanced. It's called The Week. Okay. And it's, it picks up articles from different other magazines and stuff. So, you know, it'll. Wall Street Journal, and um, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm blanking out, but it is balanced. The Week? Right? She said the, the, the week. week. The Week is a very balanced magazine. How often does it come out? Every week. Every week. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, that doesn't mean. I'll say 50 a year. Okay. Okay. That, thank you for sharing that. And I think it's important that we talk to each other too, because it makes no sense if 10 people have all these great sources that they check on. And that's something else I want to mention is into the newsroom, the, some of the sources we get are directly from the police department. I get a, every night I get an email that tells me all the rapes, the robberies, the murders, the hit and runs, all of it in Mobile County. So then you also get that information from the sheriff's department as well. Those are your sources. Your sources are people who call in. Um, your sources are people that you've met out in the community, um, as well as turning to reputable sources like that. But people are, I mean, the news is struggling because they have, they have fewer people to fill more slots, and, and they don't want to make it all national, and they don't want to make it all police blotter. So they're trying to do what they can um, with very few bodies to do it. So if you have a story and you know it's diverse, that you know people should, should know about it, don't call, if the, story, if, if the event starts at 12, don't call 11.30 and say, is the station gonna be there? Mm -mm. You have to almost go into citizen journalism and help people out. And stations appreciate it, they do, but you've got to email two weeks before, a week before, the day before, the day of, an hour before. You gotta stay on them, because they'll go, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> are you kidding? Because there's so many different layers and people who are trying to get things done and they're moving quickly and then breaking news will blow everything out. Um, 
And many people will say, you, you always have just horrible stories. I don't watch the news. It's always negative. But you're doing yourself a disservice because you don't know what's happening in your community. And I give the example of if there's a robbery that has just happened and there's an armed suspect who's running down your street but you choose not to watch the news, guess what will happen when you're going home and you're just driving it? Oh, that looks like a nice man. You need a ride? <laughs> That's him. <laughs> so you have to be informed. You have, but, but you have to make sure that it's, it's factual. So look for that blue check mark on all your different social media outlets. And it's, it's important, and as politically, you have to hold these people accountable too. Because what's happening, and you're hearing it during the hearings, people are saying what they want to say, even though it's, it's so not true, but they, that way it's, it's, it's heard. Yes, and you notice, uh -huh. especially if it's continuously repeated. That's right. That's and, and right. I, I kept saying, where's the question? Now that we have <laughs> oh, they didn't need that. They just need their sound bite time. Yeah, there, there was no question. Mm -hmm. It was just, I'm going to say, say this delusional statement. Yep. And, and one person will hear it, and they'll tell 30 of their friends, and then they'll share it on Facebook. And, and, and it just, it, it's like a big fat snowball that keeps going and going and going. Yes, ma'am. I was just, um, I have changed uh, channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I watch David Muir. ABC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but I, I just think he is a good uh, anchor. It depends on which, which DMA um, well, <laughs> survey you're looking at. Well, that's the one that's, everything I've seen that he's is rating the highest. But it could be between 11, uh, 1001 and 1005. And then 1006 to 1015, um, no, I'm Lester, I'm Lester I'm Holt. Looking, I'm looking at the. He was the weatherman. I don't know why. Mm hmm. But then I started watching him. Mm hmm. I really. His cadence. He's known for his cadence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's the six o'clock news is where his is the highest. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And then Lester Holt and then Nora Donald Willis. I'm done. There's my contact information, but I'll be happy to keep answering questions. But I'm done. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. My website. I am all social media. So Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All social media. All social media. Mm hmm. A website will be coming, but it'll be just a landing page just to get you back to all my social media. Because websites are antiquated to me because you have to have someone updating it at all times. Otherwise, it's all slant, slanted and, and, you know, crooked and lopsided. But your social media is real time. And your social media is paid at the, at the very bottom, at Kathan Productions. Yep. I just, I included my, my card because... That's the best way to reach me. There's my phone number, and I would love to answer more of your questions. If you have them, I'm a texter, as many of our sisters know. Mm -hmm. But thank you for having me and letting me share just a smidge about the news business. Hopefully it has enlightened you just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you.